Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Ndate Yala Mboj Ndate Yala was born in 1810 to her father, the powerful and controversial king of Walu, Brak Amar Fatim Borso Mboj, and her mother, the Linger Awu, Fatim Yamar Kuri Yaye Mboj. Her family was one that was enriched by accumulating weapons and wealth through exchanges with the French. In Walu, the kings were titled Brak, while the queens and royal princesses in most parts of Senegambian dynastic pre-colonial history were titled Lingyer. The Lingyer Awu was the first wife of the king and as a result, one of the most powerful women along with the king's mother and sister. Queen Ndate was crowned Lingyer of Walu on the 1st of October 1846 in Nda, the capital of Walu. She succeeded her elder sister, Njombut Mboj, as Linger, reigning as Linger from 1846 to 1855, the year Walu fell to the French. In early 1847, she opposed the French authorities over the free passage for the Saracoles who supplied the island of St. Louis with cattle. This led into a series of issues which the queen battled fearlessly. During her reign, she and her husband, Maro Sotasi, who was commander of her army, fought against the Moors of Trazar who were encroaching on her territory. They also fought the French colonialist army that was led by General Louis Fiderb. Their years of tough resistance against colonization resulted in attacks between 1854 and 1855. During her reign, Walu was the only kingdom that was truly led by a woman. Walu was also close to St. Louis, a French stronghold, so Fida planned to conquer it, so that if it fell, it would be the first of the Senegambian kingdoms to fall. It actually did, however, it didn't happen as easy as the French had thought. After months of battle, Maro Sotase and his wife refused to submit to the French invasion. They mobilized more forces in order to resist the French coalition army. Fideb responded by bringing new weaponry and 15,000 army personnel, some of whom he brought in from Algeria to supplement his forces. The French also brought in 400 horsemen under the command of Fuse, the director of internal affairs at the time. As valiant as Maro Sotase was, he couldn't defeat the French with the army under his command. On the 25th of January 1855, at the Battle of Djibouti, the French ravaged and destroyed Walu. Maro Sotase and his warriors held firm and refused to submit. The Queen too remained defiant as she received updates. On the 31st of January 1855, Fideb finally defeated the Queen and gained control of Walu. Tasse lost many of his men in battle, while he and his wife felt ultimately defeated and humiliated as their reign witnessed honor and glory before that time. Even more saddening was the fact that the French held their young son in hostage. He was forcefully baptized a Christian and they further added Leon to his name, making him Cydia Leon Dio. He was also sent to a French school abroad. He later requested to return to his country, where he launched a campaign of attacks against the French. Queen Ndate eventually died in Dagana in 1860. There were various actions taken to immortalize her. In her honor, a statue was erected in Dagana. Queen Ndate Yala Mboj along with some other African heroines remains recognized for playing vital roles in struggling for African liberation. 
oral historians keep working effortlessly to immortalize their bravery. Many identify the late Queen Ndati as a symbol of female empowerment and an unforgettable resistance against French colonialism. What have we missed out of this biography of Queen Ndati Yala Mboj? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.